I hope you're all well. So today we're going to look at how you use your Cricut pens. They are really easy to use, but there's a few things you do need to know about them. For those of you that don't join me in the group I co-run UK Cricut Creators, you don't need to be in the UK, you just need to love your Cricut. We have been running free events. So we do approximately about eight of these a month. They're completely free to join. They're via Zoom. So we all craft together, we all learn. You can ask us questions and we can help you. They're absolutely brilliant. And I'll be doing a video now for each of those events. So two of the events we've run are about Cricut pens and how you can use them and how you can create different layers with them, different colours with them, how you write with them, how you get single line text and images with them and so on and so forth. So that's what I'm going to show you today. If you don't join us in UK Cricut Creators, come and join us and you'll be able to join in with the free events as well. So the first thing we're going to look at is text. And I'm gonna come up to my font and I'm just going to choose any font, be it a Cricut one or a system font. A system font is a font that you have downloaded onto your uh, iPhone or your uh, Android or even your computer. So we're gonna choose a child's year, which is an access font. And if I simply start typing, You'll see it automatically comes up as a cut. If I then change that from a cut by coming up to my line type to a draw, we end up with a double line text. Sometimes you may want a double line text, especially if you're using some of the thicker pens like the metallics, which are a medium tip they work quite well because you end up with them coming quite close together and then you can just colour it in or if of course you want a double line text like this and then you want to manually come in and colour they work great but a lot of times I see people saying but I don't want this double line I want a single line it's always worth checking the style so if we come down here, we can see there is actually a writing style on this one. So if I click it, it will change it from a double line to a single line. There's also another way to get that up. So if we just get rid of this and we go to text and again, we come up to our fonts and we select filter and writing it will then give us all of our writing fonts and you'll see that they are mainly Cricut the reason being is that when you bring in a font so a system font they don't actually have the writing style with them so you will mainly be working with Cricut fonts so if we then just click on any of them so let's do birthday cake and we then write our text, you'll see we've straight away ended up with that single line text. Now there are some fonts you can get that are single line. So this one here is one I absolutely love, which is Dear Agatha. I will link to it in the description below. So you can type in single line fonts and you'll be able to find fonts that are single line. You will need to look carefully though when you download them to see which of the files is the single line. So for example with this one there's quite a few different versions in there but if you actually double click on them you'll see how they're going to look. So we know it's not going to be that one and it does look like that when you uh, use it in design space. The Sans one also comes out funny but the Sans 2 and Dear Agatha 2 are both single lines. So those are the ones that you want to actually install to your computer or your phone, and then you can use them in design space. So if I just come into my fonts and use my search to start searching for Dear, you'll see we've got Dear Agatha 2 and Dear Sans 2. So if we select Dear Agatha 2, and we then write our text 
you'll see it's single line. However, it is set to cut. If we change that to draw, it keeps that single line. Equally, if we change it from Dear Agatha 2 to Dear Agatha Sands 2, it will also turn into a single line. Again, it turns it to a cut and we simply change it to a draw. So let's say we want these all in different colours of pens. So the easy way to do it is come up to Advanced and Ungroup to Letters, or you can simply use your Layers panel and Ungroup. And you'll see that our letters each become individual. So if I want them all different colours, I simply need to click on one. I can click on my colour and it doesn't matter what colour or what pen I'm choosing. All the Cricut machine knows is that you want to change the colour. However, I always keep my colours in sync with what colour pen I'm using. So even though it's candy corn, it doesn't need to be candy corn that I use, but I will use an orange coloured pen. Equally with my L, if we select and say I want some different colours, let's change to a glitter gel. I can then choose some more colours that way. And again, it doesn't have to be the glitter gel violet, but I know that I want to use a purple pen. And it will tell me I'm using a glitter pen. So equally, if I want a purple glitter pen, I'll know that that's the one I want to use. So I'm simply going to come in and just change all of these very quickly. If I want a whole word to be one colour, just nice and easy for me to do if it's got a lot of letters in it, is I simply weld it together. Now remember that welding is like super glue. So if you weld something and you then save and you close down Design Space, when you come back in, you won't be able to unweld it. So I always recommend saving before you weld something. But if I weld it, it treats it as one complete piece. So if I change the colour for one, I'm changing the colour for all. The same with this one. If I want them all the same colour, rather than individually doing them, if I weld it, I can then change the colour for the whole world. Now, if we attach when something is a cut, it will automatically turn everything the same colour. However, if we attach when it's a draw, it will keep those individual colours. And you always want to make sure that if you have ungrouped and you have changed the colours on your draw, you must remember to attach them. Because if you don't attach, when we go to make it, every letter will be individually jumbled up. So make sure that you select attach. And then when you go to make it, everything will stay exactly as you have created it. So if we go to images, and we browse all images, you have actually got the choice to choose drawn images as well. So for example, if we select art type and we select draw only, we can then search for the drawn images we want. So for example, if we type in flowers, it will bring us all the drawn flowers. Now, if I want this all one colour, very easy. I just leave it black and then I can put whatever colour pen I want in. But let's say I want this different colours. You need to look at the image you're working with. And with a ready drawn image, it can be a little bit of work to change the colours. So if I say, for example, I want the grass green. The easiest way to do this is to use your contour tool. So I'm going to duplicate this image. So I've got two of them. And one I'm going to change to a green colour. And then I'm going to bring it over to the other one. 
Mm. I'm going to highlight, align and centre. And you'll see in my layers panel, I've got a black layer and a green layer. So let's select the green layer first and choose our contour, which is down in the bottom of your layers panel. And the great thing with your contour is you can zoom in and out. So I want the grass to all be green rather than individually coming in and removing all of these pieces. I'm simply going to choose hide all contours and it will hide everything but the top piece. If I then start selecting the grass, it's going to bring that back on that green layer. And then all I need to do is just remove that top layer. If we then close down our contour, we'll see that our grass is green. However, behind that, if we hide our green and we can hide on our layers panel without moving anything by clicking on this eye here, you'll see the black is still there on our grass. So this time I'm going to contour that away. So let's select contour. And this time I'm going to actually click on them to remove them. And if you look at my screen here, you will see that the grass is starting to disappear. So our black layer now has no grass, but if we bring our green layer back, it now has green grass. Now the things you may struggle with if it's a drawer is if lines are connected. So if we click on our black layer and we go to contour, we'll be able to see if that stem is connected to the rest of our gnome and actually it isn't. So again, what I can do is duplicate that black layer. This time, let's change the color to a, I don't know, a bright green. I'm just going to hide my grass because it will move them if I center this. So what I'm going to do is hide it. I'm going to bring these so they're virtually over each other and then align and center. I'm going to hide my black layer. So I'm just left with my green layer. And again, if I go to contour, Rather than removing everything, I'm simply going to hide all contours and then I'm going to bring back the lines that I want to bring back. And then if we bring back our other three layers, you'll see everything is starting to take place. But what I do need to remember to do is on that black layer is to then go to my contour and remove the areas that I've just made green. And if you ever struggle to select a piece, you can use this layers panel down here to find the piece you want and then click on it to either bring it forward so you it's there or to remove it. So our gnome is definitely starting to take shape now. So again, I'm going to hide these two colored layers and again, I will duplicate my black layer. This time I'm going to make it yellow. I'm going to bring it over, align and center. And then with my yellow layer, I can bring my contour. I can hide all contours and then start bringing back the areas that I want to be in yellow. Once I've done that, I can then select that black layer, bring back my contour tool and remove those yellow pieces so I'm not drawing over them. Once I'm happy with everything, all I simply do is highlight and attach. So that will keep everything in its place. And it also means we will keep those colors. So the machine will tell us when it wants the green pen, when it wants the dark green pen, when it wants the black pen, when it wants the yellow pen. 
and it will draw this exactly as you see it. Now, the one thing the Cricut machines cannot do is color in. So if you want it colored in, so for example, we want the hat colored in, you will manually have to do that. Now you can make the lines thicker depending on the type of pens you're using. If you're using the metallic pens, they have a thicker nib than the extra fine pens, but you can also color in using any other pens as well. You must use Cricut pens in the Cricut machine or pens that will fit in the machine without an adapter. Please, please, I urge you not to use any pen adapters. You will invalidate the warranty on your machine. Equally, if you're out of warranty and you break the clamp by putting in an, an adapter, you then have a broken machine. So please don't use the pen adapters. There are plenty of Cricut pens available. I will link to those in the description below, both for the UK and the States. And also for the States, I have a 10% discount code for Cricut which is valid for everything except electrical items and you also get free shipping as well but there are lots of pens available to go in the machines as they are and equally you can use anything you like to color in with so next we're going to go to images and again let's type in flower and in fact i changed my mind we're going to do fall so let's select this one and insert image. And you'll see that everything is set to cut. But we can actually change each layer from a cut to a draw. The line type will automatically go to black, but you can change it by selecting the color and then just changing that color. So we'll do it for this layer as well. So it's currently set to a cut. We can change it to a draw and then change that color. And let's do the same with this layer, draw and change the color. Let's go for a more orange color. And then the same with this one, it's set to a cut. Let's change to a draw. And then let's go for a more ready color. Now, if I change the writing from a cut to a draw, because it's nice and thick, as soon as I change it to a draw, I'm going to get that double line. So I have two choices. I can either leave it like that, or I can go to my text and I can then choose a writing font. So again, if I go to filter and writing, I can then choose a writing font and I can change the text in the middle of there. Now this is currently all grouped together. I need to attach it because if it's simply grouped, when I go to make it, you'll see it's all jumbled. So if I want to keep my drawing exactly as you see it, I need to make sure I attach and then I can go to make it. Now, if I want these to go on something, so for example, I want them on a shape that I then cut out, very simply, I'm just going to grab a shape, so let's say a circle for my fall. I like to change the color to white, it doesn't matter what color it is, as long as it's set to cut. Arrange and center back. I can bring my fall over and then I'm simply going to attach the two together. So this will draw everything you see but it will cut the circle and of course I can make it bigger and smaller if I want to and equally if I want my gnome to, for example to go on a card if I go into images and I search for card I can choose any card image I like. Uh, let's go with just this one. Again, I like to change the color. So if I just select the layers panel and change it from a brown to a white, it doesn't matter because it's whatever color cardstock I put down. I go to arrange and center back. Of course, it's already got my score line in there, which is fantastic. I can size up my image to go in my card. And then I'm simply going to attach. 
So it will cut out my two pieces, but it will draw my two images. I do want them on two different mats, so I'm just going to change the colour of this one to a slightly darker grey. It doesn't matter because, as I say, it's the colour of card I put, but when it's a cut, if they're two different colours, they will cut on separate mats. Now, if I was just drawing onto the same piece of card, I wouldn't do anything. I would just go to make it, and I could then place them on my mat where my card was going to be, and I can draw that way. But because I'm actually cutting, I am doing it this way. And actually, just to show you, I've got my two drawn pieces there, which are just on their own. And then I've got one attached to my white card, which I'm going to cut out as a card. And then I've got one attached to a grey circle, which again, I will cut out in a piece of card, but it doesn't have to be grey card. If I go to make it, see, I've then got three mats. One with my grey drawer and cut one with my white card draw and cut, and then one with my two draw pieces. And I can, of course, move them all around. If we go to continue, we can then select our device, and it doesn't matter whether you're using Maker, one of the air machines, or your Joy. Now, even if it's just drawing, there's no cut involved, it will still ask for a base material. So I normally just will go straight for a cardstock but there's no cutting involved it simply is going to draw and it will tell me not only the first pen it's going to use but consequently all the other colors as well and every time it wants to change the pen color it will tell me what color it wants with this one because it's a score draw and cut it will tell us that we need to choose a cardstock so for this I'm actually going to choose a different card stock and I'm just going to use a heavy card stock and it will tell us that we need our pens and our scoring wheel. With our scoring wheel, if you don't have one, you only have the scoring stylus, very simply just edit tools and you can then choose the scoring stylus and it will also tell us what subsequent pens we want and our fine point blade and with this one because it's just a draw and a cut We'll choose our cut setting, it will tell us what pens we need and that we need our fine point blade. So we're going to be making this card today.